Speaking of old projects, let's load up another old project. And we'll go back to our matcap gray. And for this one, temporarily, let's make this a white color. And then I'm going to turn off the uh, preview AO right now. Now for this one, I want to, I really want to use the new contrast brushes. It's a really neat. Uh, but I'm also going to demonstrate, because we're already talking about it, thick skin in conjunction with uh, the cloth brushes. Now, of course, you can use that to get a clay effect as well, but it's also useful to kind of limit uh, your cloth effects. So let me show you a few examples of that. Uh, number one, if I alt tap this head here and go into solo mode, you're going to see we just have the head geometry here. And if I go in here to uh, BC... K, which is our cloth hook brush. Uh, again, we have this set at 1.36 million. So if I use this, it's not going to really behave as normal. It's not really simulating anything because if we go in here to dynamics, you're going to see our max simulation points are set to 250. Now, as I'm talking and I'm like, oh, you can use cloth simulation and ZSphere posing. Again, this isn't the basics of ZBrush. This is all cool stuff, but not really relevant to these tools. But if you want to know more, uh, for cloth, for example, ZBrush 2021, what's new? Just go click that open. There's 63 videos. It'll take you through all the new micro poly cloth dynamics, cloth simulation type stuff that you can do. There's a lot of really neat stuff in there. So check that out if you haven't yet. And again, that's on my ArtStation page or my YouTube channel under playlists. So here's ZBrush 2021, 2121, what's new? ZBrush 2020, what's new, etc. But anyway, back to our object here with cloth and thick skin. So number one, we need to, we need this to work. Uh, and you know, our, our simulation points, our max simulation points is set to 250. And honestly, that's plenty. I don't need to simulate more than that. And in fact, I can hold down Control Shift, go in here to select lasso. And now I can use this lasso to go through and just isolate the areas of the mesh I want to work with. This is down to 90,000 points, which is well under that threshold. So now I can go in here again, B, C, J for our cloth hook brush. Oh, I'm sorry, B, C, K for our cloth hook brush. And now we can go through here and this will actually simulate. Now again, this is way too many simulation points. And why I'm saying that is because these wrinkles are very fine. It's taking all these polygons that are in here, and it's a lot of them, and moving them around. So it's giving us very, very fine wrinkles. And again, if you want really fine wrinkles, go for it. What I'm looking for is more of these big eye bag wrinkles. Now there's a couple different ways I can do that. Number one, I can go over here to firmness and say, you know what, give me a firmness of four and that'll actually make these wrinkles a little more pronounced, or if I undo that, I can go down here to say like subdivision level four, that's gonna lower the resolution of my mesh, and we'll take this firmness back down to two. And just because there's not that much geometry here to manipulate, it's going to actually just treat these as larger form changes. So I can you see very quickly, I can go through here and kind of nudge these into place using just cloth. In fact, if I hold down control shift and bring everything else back, I can go through here and just kind of nudge these things into place and uh, get more wrinkles that way. And in fact, I'm going to keep saying that, if I go in here to dynamic, turn on dynamic here and say smooth subdiv of like one or two, that's going to give you a preview of what it would look like if you subdivided this mesh twice while you're you know, working at these lower resolutions. So if you want a sneak preview of what it's going to look like um, after you go back and up in your resolution, uh, you can use that. But you know what, we'll just go ahead and uh, turn off dynamic for now. Now, what does this have to do with thick skin? Well, you're gonna see as I'm using this cloth brush here, using the cloth hook brush, and we're moving this around, I can simulate this entire head as like a wrinkly cloth bag or something, you know, and we can change all these settings over here. But this is, you know, there's, there's bone underneath here. Let's go ahead and undo all those changes I did here. Make sure dynamics turned off, sorry about that. So, you know, again, cloth hook, we're simulating this thing. It's like, ah, oh, it's, it's too much. Like, okay, yeah, I want wrinkles here, but I don't want to like move this horn up or have to go through here and like mask and invert and go through here and do that. I just want to limit the effect of my cloth brush. Well, you know how to do that because we already know how to limit the effects of brushes and that's using thick skin. So the cool thing about this is if I turn this on and we set this thick skin, you know, give us a little bit of wiggle room, let's say like 6.5. Now when I use this cloth hook brush, it's not going to go all over the place. It's going to stop the influence of that brush depending on the depth. If you need a lot of wiggle room, crank it up and now you can go a little bit crazy. But if you just want to make it look like skin is sliding over the surface, set it to like four or five. And now it's going to kind of really limit uh, how and where this cloth can interact. It's almost like you're sliding skin over bone, which is perfect. And then all it's really doing is taking this initial volume that already exists and going negative four units, positive four units, and allowing this cloth brush to work within that threshold.
So now you can kind of push wrinkles across, across a bony surface here really, really effectively and easily. Uh, again, just by limiting that influence. So get it some very, really cool effects. And once you've done that, you can go up here, back up to subdivision level six, and now you've got more wrinkle forms in there. Now, again, we've changed our subdivision level, so we've lost our thick skin ability. You're gonna see, and, and also where we've lost our ability to use our uh, simulation because we have too many points. But if we go back down to subdivision level four, boom, we have that ability back. So it's gonna remember what subdivision level you were at and the thick skin uh, that you're using. Again, if you need more wiggle room, just up that thick skin amount. Or if you want to get rid of it completely, turn it to zero and just brush out uh, your result there. And just because it's so cool, I'm going to talk about this later. And if you're, you're done learning about this and you want to go to the next thing, go for it. I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of the cloth or I'm the uh, BC contrast delta and contrast target. So we'll just choose contrast delta. And essentially this is a contrast brush. So I can go through here and I can just up the contrast of all this. So if you need a 3D print or something an engine isn't uh, baking with enough uh, contrast in here, or if you're just making skin and you just need a little more contrast, just run this brush over here and uh, you're in good shape. And the reason I went for a cloth solution in these eye bags here, if we actually go back to our original mesh here, you're gonna see if I use this contrast brush, it will give me more contrast with the existing geo here, but it's not gonna make the wrinkles better. And that's why I had to resort to uh, cloth. Because again, I don't wanna just increase the contrast between the existing wrinkles. I actually wanna make the wrinkles better. And that's where BCK brush cloth hook comes into play, a little bit of thick skin. And it's great out here. So let's go ahead and hold down control shift, bring everything else back, turn on thick skin, say thick skin of five, then isolate it, and now it'll let me use that thick skin uh, on an isolated part. So go ahead and have all your verts showing first, and then turn on thick skin. And now instead of just increasing contrast of those wrinkles using the contrast brush, I'm actually going through here and giving myself new wrinkles. And of course, you can still go back here, say, okay, let's go back up here to Southern level uh, six, go back in with a BC, Y or Z, contrast delta, or if you've used it recently, your brush menu over here will have it as a recently used brush. And now you can increase uh, the contrast on those wrinkles if you need to. So let's go out of solo mode here. And if you have other old cloth things you've been sculpting here, like these are really pretty terrible, you know, little cloth inserts. All it is is just this geo here. Use panel loops for that. And again, let's go down here. Let's say sort of in level three, give us a little bit less geo to work with, get some larger wrinkles, turn on thick skin, just give us a little bit of wiggle room, maybe nine BCK, move this cloth around. Now you're gonna see, I can kind of nudge using the cloth hook, you can actually use cloth nudge if you want to, and I kind of get a result, but remember, you can also use any brush with cloth settings. So if I go in here to like say B, P, I for our pinch brush, uh, if I just use it now, it's just gonna pinch um, these together. You know, just taking geometry and kind of pinching it together. However, if I go down here to elasticity, brush elasticity, crank up that simulation iterations, that's going to say use 100% of the simulation iterations while I use this brush. So essentially you can turn any brush into a cloth brush simply by taking elasticity and giving it simulation iterations. So now when I use the pinch brush, I can go across this form and that'll just give me cloth. So I'm essentially, if I go uh, up and down in this direction, it'll kind of pinch my cloth. That way, if I go across this direction, you'll see it's gonna kind of nicely pinch uh, the cloth in that direction. So very quickly, you can go in here, update this cloth. And again, we're limiting it with thick skin. So it's really just kind of deforming it right over uh, that, that pre-existing surface. And this is really obvious if I alt tap this one down here. And again, we'll drop that, say so there's level four, BCK cloth hook. If I go in here now, I have it like there's something in here, right? And I don't want to just take this cloth and go nuts with it. I want it to pretend like there's something in here. Um, you know, I could go in here and I could put in a collision volume and slide it around that or deform it around that, but it's a lot easier uh, just to say, hey, you know what? The collision volume is generally this shape. Go in here, thick skin, give myself a little wiggle room, maybe nine in and out. And now I can go through here and I can kind of push the cloth in this direction push the cloth in that direction. And again, if you don't want, uh, you want slightly larger wrinkles, you can drop that subdivision down or maybe crank that firmness up a little bit. And now when you go through here and kind of push this around, or if you need more wiggle rooms, crank it up. So now you can kind of push this. And again, it's gonna limit you. It's like you're taking cloth over a pre-existing shape, which is really the pre-existing shape, just 30 units down, 30 units up. Uh, but it's gonna give the illusion like you're 
pulling cloth along an underlying surface. So uh, very, very cool, very easy to go back to your old projects and just add a little bit more uh, of that finesse using thick skin, and in this case, uh, cloth. 